What's up guys? Today is the day where I finally got my Pine Phone. And this is the latest version of the Pine Phone. Unlike the older version, which is four small cores, this one has two large, which are similar to a Raspberry Pi 4, and then it has the same old four cores that were in the older model of the phone. It also has an upgraded GPU, and we are going to do an unboxing. So I don't know what the packaging in here looks like. I've seen some of the other videos online, uh, Linus Text tech tips did a video on the pine phone on the older version and the box was kind of nice but all I see is this brown box on the outside as was shipped by a DHL so we're gonna go ahead and open this up and take a look at what the pine phone box looks like inside and it does look very nice it looks like you would expect most decent phones to look like, especially because this is the Pine Phone Pro Explorer Edition. It costs $399, so hopefully I can put this into day-to-day -day production, although I'm not completely holding my breath on that yet, partly because the battery is sort of small. I think it's a 3000 milliamp hour battery. The original Pine Phone, the, or the Community Edition, which are slightly older, I think had a 2800 milliamp hour battery. So this is a little bit bigger. I don't know, I really miss having a phone with a keyboard. So I might end up getting a keyboard attachment for this phone. And the Pine Phone keyboard ha comes with a 9000 milliamp hour battery. So that should get about a week on a charge once all of the optimizations have been completed. And it's kind of stuck. Let's see, on the side, it says that there is the user manual and quick start guide, the Pine Phone Pro, and then the USB-C power cable. It's a little bit blurry, so probably hard for you to see. I actually need to manually adjust because this camera doesn't do so well auto-adjusting at this range. So it doesn't come with the dock like the the Pine Fro Phone Community Ish Edition did, but maybe I'll need to buy something like that as well. These Pine Phones are probably about as powerful as uh, one of the more powerful netbooks back when those were, were a thing. All right, so this is the inside of the top part of the box. And then we have the inside comes with a quick start guide but you know why would I read directions that's crazy okay throw that off to the side we're not gonna read that on screen that would be kind of boring we have a screen protector this actually is a really nice addition here and I do have a couple of phones to compare it to I almost always put a screen protector on my phones And we have the packaging and then the Pine Phone right here. Okay, and I did get a couple of the phones that I have laying around out for comparison. So I'll put this right here so that you can compare. I'll show you the USB cable in a second. This is a Moto G6, quite a bit smaller. This is probably the closest comparison. This is a Moto G7 Power, and you'll, you've will you probably seen my de-googling videos for that. They're very, very similar in size, not only in screen size, but also in width. And Pine Phone is a little bit thicker, and that's to be expected. The Moto G7 Power, the battery in here doesn't have its own enclosure. Almost everything on the Pine Phone is replaceable by the user, including the the full chipset. We've got a couple other phones here. This is a Pixel 3 XL. 
we'll do a screen brightness comparison here in a minute. And then we also have my OnePlus 7T. It's very similar in size. Really though, the, the Moto G7 Power is, is almost exactly the same size as this Pine Phone. Now we'll go ahead and see if we can find the crack and open the back. So there we go, it's right there. Just wanna get a look at the back side of the phone, see the innards. Actually, it's not too much work. It's a little bit hard to do this on camera. Put the microphone so far away, have my arms fully extended. Cool, so there is the battery which is the battery has its own enclosure. Oh, that comes out really nice. Unlike in the Linus Tech Tips video where it took some effort for them to get the battery out. Looks like they had a protector in there, so maybe it didn't have a full charge. Or maybe it did have a full charge and they didn't want it discharging during travel. This chipset should be fully replaceable. And then up here, let me get a little bit closer and take a look. Yeah, so up here, these are all of the kill switches for Bluetooth, for uh, 3G, 4G. This six pin right here is for attachments. The attachments are supposed to be one of the cooler features of the phone because it's going to allow third parties to create full extension devices for this, including the PinePhone keyboard that actually uses this six pin up here. I'm not sure if the USB charging with the keyboard goes to the six pin or if you plug it in separately. The directions are kind of ambiguous on that. They say that you can charge, they can use, you can use the keyboard as an external charging device but I don't know if that means that you can plug into the USB-C on the bottom or if you can actually turn it on to charge through the six pin. That might be something that I try out a little bit later. Hopefully we're working with a full charge here because I'd like to do just a really quick brightness comparison. and it doesn't appear to be turning on. I'll check the battery really quick one more time. Oh, there we go. And it is, the screen is on, but there must not be an operating system on it yet. Oh, there we go. It has auto rotate. If you can see, this font is tiny. I have to actually pull this away to figure out where, which one of these I need to select. Okay, so you can just type in, type in Los, and then Los Angeles, and then we can go forward. I don't really want to connect to Wi-Fi yet. And there's a skip button up here in the far right corner. It's really hard to see. It does seem to have a little bit of lacking polish. Some of the stuff that goes on in the screen is a little bit clunky. You can see a little bit of weirdness going on as you go to the screen rotation. All right, setup complete. It takes very little to get set up. Just your location, a name, and a password. It's helpful to have a password to your Wi-Fi, but my password is a little too long for that to type in. The last thing we're going to do here during this unboxing is just take a look at the overall screen brightness. Now, word of warning while we're loading up right here, I've been having uh, some conversations with uh, Dan over on the channel Ambrose from what I understand he's going to do a full review on this phone This is just an unboxing and first impressions He mentioned that on the subreddit that Users are having a difficult time 
with their phones. They're saying that it's bricked because they're, it turns on automatically when you plug it in with a low vo low wattage charger. And with the with a low wattage charger, it's not fast enough to counteract the discharge from the battery because this phone isn't optimized yet. I would have never run into this issue because all of my chargers around here are relatively high wattage. Most of them I, I've used to power a MacBook that was issued by my workplace. I'm gonna take a look here. I turned up the brightness as bright as I could on on the Pine phone. And you can see it's substantially brighter than my OnePlus 7T. Don't want to show you whatever I just clicked on screen there. Uh, the Pixel 3 gets, XL gets a little bit closer, but it's still not quite there. This is an OLED LED screen, and the Pine phone is an LCD screen. I suspect, wherever I put it, that the, the Moto G7 power is going to get much closer as far as brightness. And actually they are very similar, which actually makes a lot of sense. You know, this is basically the same size screen. It might be the it might be the exact same screen that they used between the two, two devices. So that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and play with the Pine phone. I'm probably not going to, well, I'm definitely not going to put it into daily driving use yet. Ambrose did attempt to do that already, uh, and he'll have his, his review um, and kind of go through everything that he thinks about it. Uh, we'll take a look at this USB-C cable. It, there's really nothing important to see here. It's just a, a red USB-C cable. It does feel kind of nice. I like that the phone is relatively thick. I never really had a problem with the thickness of my Moto G7 Power when I was using it for daily driving. So I, I really like it. I'm, I'm totally stoked for this phone. I'm excited to see what I can do with Linux in my pocket wherever I go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I may be able to answer them. But if not, have a great one. This is Nick, signing out.